professor dr n ganesh is working as a senior faculty department of computer science and engineering srm university city campus vadapallani chennai he has more than 12 years of undergraduate and postgraduate teaching experience which includes 5 years of research experience he has trained many corporate batches on technologies such as mainframes application systems 400 sap abap He has published 10 articles in both international and national journals. He has presented several papers in both national and international conferences. He has written 4 books which are prescribed in Anna University affiliated colleges, SRM University and Bharat University. His research interests are software engineering, data mining and cloud computing. Welcome to UGC lecture series in computer science. We are going to see a series of lectures in the subject operating system. This subject is for the students studying in the 5th semester of the BSc degree program. The subject operating system belongs to paper number 8. In today's lecture, we are going to see few topics from unit 4. As far as unit 4 is concerned, there are several topics out of which we are going to see topics on file system and about the file concepts. and about the access methods so today's contents will be like what is a file concept and what is a file what is a file structure and what are the different file attributes and what are the different file operations and what are the different file types available and how to access those files and how these files get stored in the directory or in the disk so and how the files have been organized in a disk so all these things we will be seeing in today's lecture now what is a file a file is a contiguous and a logical address space so file is been stored as a contiguous and a logical address space the files have been broadly classified into two types one is called as a data file other one is a program file this data file has numeric values and it has character values as well it has binary values now let us see about a file structure as far as the file structure is concerned what is a file first of all i suppose you would have seen working you would have worked with different sets of files you would have seen you would have worked with the document files document file in the sense is you would have worked with the microsoft word so when you start typing after a after it encounters a particular column it automatically goes to a second line and it starts typing when you give your input in the keyboard so all your uh, keys all the values whatever you have input at will be typed and on the microsoft word and then it will be going on a line by line basis because after a particular line after a particular column it goes to the second line automatically that is one way of file the other thing is i suppose if you have if you had an uh, opportunity to type in uh, notepad in the notepad when you type have you found any difference in typing between a notepad and when you type the same contents in the microsoft word in the microsoft word when you type after a particular column when it encounters an end of page end of line it goes to the next line whereas in the case of notepad when you start typing unless and until you press an enter button it will not come to the next uh, line so in order to make the contents to go on to the next line you are supposed to press the enter key available in the keyboard or else this will be Uh, kept on a single line so such a file we call it as a sequential file or it is also called as a flat file a flat file is one wherein you do not have it does not follow a proper structure and the files by and large we can classify the structure into as a no structure basis wherein no logical uh, sequencing has been followed in handling the file 
the second opportunity is so what we will do is we will see the different file structures one is none none means we have a sequence of words which get stored in the bytes and then the second type of file structure is a simple record structure in a simple record structure we type all our inputs in line and then whatever input that we type it has a fixed length as i said in a microsoft word we have the the files gets or the or the wordings gets typed up to a length of say for example uh, up to a length of 72 columns 72 character column length and then that is called as a fixed length we have a variable length even in the same microsoft word supposing we are going to change our uh, uh, page into landscape from portrait in portrait what is a portrait and what is a landscape portrait is having a file in a vertical direction having the uh, say for example if you are going to take a page a paper an a4 sheet if you are going to have it on a vertical direction and it is called as a portrait direction if you are going to tilt the paper if say for example if your paper is like this and if you are going to change the paper to in this manner from vertical to horizontal direction then and and then when you start typing or when you start writing in that paper you can write more number of wordings on a single line when compared to writing it writing it on a portrait basis so that is here when we see we can enhance the length of the of our writing that is called as a variable length structure so this has been there kept in the simple record structure and the next record is said to be a complex record structure wherein you have a formatted document what do you mean by formatted document based on the requirement based on the needs based on the output preference that has been assigned or that has been the task that has been given by the customer end so based on his request you are formatting it and you are working out so that is called as a formatted document say for example when you are going to uh, take a passbook printout it has a format that is the date should be printed only at the left hand corner then we have the description of what has to be printed and then about the uh, withdrawals and then about we have a space kept for the deposits and the last space has been allocated for knowing the balance so after withdrawal and after deposit what is the present balance so this has been put on a specific format so this is called as a complex record structure then who decides all these type of file structure is so that as either the operating system by itself can decide or the program which what you are going to run it can decide of its own then about the file attributes what is a file attribute from the name the from the name of attribute what you could infer an attribute is one which has all the details about the file when you are going to take a file a file in the sense let us consider you are going to type your contents in ms word microsoft word now when you are going to type the contents in microsoft word in the case of attributes what are things will do you think that it will get stored in the file the file will definitely have a name so let us see the set of attributes one is the file name file will definitely have a name and a file identifier the file internally this name whatever file you are going to store it has a unique tag number which identifies the file within the file system what are the different file system that we will see we have different file systems as fat file system ntfs file system wherein you would have been knowing knowing that the different sets of file system fat is a file allocation table and uh, the ntfs is a new technology file system so which you will be seeing in the in our forthcoming slides and then we have a type what is the type of file that you are going to store whether you are going to store a document file or a docx file what is the difference between doc and docx docx is a file which is which we uh, will be using it when we type in in microsoft word 2003 and from 2007 onwards we have one other new format even 2007 supports doc format 
Apart from that, it has one other new format called as docx, document extendable format. And then it it as well. Supposing if it is not a document format, supposing if it is a PDF format, PDF is wherein you work with an Adobe PDF readers, wherein it is not editable. That is some of the contents. Even you have Adobe writers in which you can uh, edit and you can save it out. So these are the different types of file. If it is of a Notepad file, it will it will have an extension of .txt. So we will be seeing various extensions in our forthcoming slides. So th these are the things corresponds to the file attributes. So this is one other file attribute. Type is one other file attribute. Then the location. Location is where your file has been stored in the directory. So directory in sense, say for example, you have different drives as C drive. D drive, E drive, F drive in your operating system, in your computer. Then where have you stored the file that represents the location? Have you stored the file in D drive or have you stored the file in E drive or have you stored it in desktop which which is part of C drive usually because usually we used to install our operating system in C drive. If you are going to install our operating system in C drive then the desktop will be part of the C drive. So such a location of where the file is being stored is called as a file location that is as well and one of the file attribute. The other attribute is the size. What is the size of the storage? How much of MB or KB this particular file requires for its storage? And then the next attribute is about the protection. Protection denotes who can access the file, whether it is a read only file, whether it should be a read only file or whether it should be a hidden file or whether anyone can access it, how the access method should be, whether it should be given full access for anyone whoever reads it will be in a position to update it, will be in a position to modify it, will be in a position to delete it, will be in a position to insert it or no one should be in a position to update or modify or delete the contents, they can be given permission only to view the file. So that is a way of protection that is called as a read only. And then supposing even if, if you think that others should not see the file then you can hide the file that is called as hidden file. Then the next attribute is the time, date and the user identification. Which user has used this file? Which user has saved this file? If it is of a groups there may be n number of users. So which user has saved the file? and at what time he has saved the file and at what location he is going to save the file and what is the size of the file. So all these things and, and then on, on what date he has saved the file. So all these things correspond to file attributes. Then we also have the information about the files that are kept in the directory structure which is maintained on the disk. Disk is nothing but the hard disk. The hard disk is nothing but it is the secondary storage as you might be knowing which we have seen in our one of our earlier lectures. Then these are things that are required on a file attribute. Now let us see the different file operations. What do you mean by file operation? See now you have created a file. You have opened an MS Word document and you have saved it. So when you are saving it you are able to identify the name, ID, the username, when, at uh, what time and what is the size and what is the date and how to access the files. So these things happen to come under file attribute. Now we will see how to access those files or what are the operations that are available in a file with that word document what you could do. The operations are one is we have a create operation. Create operation is we are creating a new file. Second one is write operation. Write is we can write the contents in the file. Third one is the read operation. Read is and we can read or anyone uh, can read the contents from the file. Fourth is delete operation. Delete is we can delete the contents from the file or we can even delete the entire file. See there is a difference between deleting and dropping. Deleting is you are going to delete the entire contents available inside a particular file. Whereas in the case of drop, we are going to drop the file from the physical memory. 
from the hard disk itself we are going to make a complete delete supposing we are going to uh, mark the file and when you press a delete button it deletes and then it goes and sits in the recycle bin supposing we are going to press the shift key and the delete button it, it, will, it will show you a pop up message stating that whether you want to delete it confirm file delete so when you press enter it will not go to the recycle bin wherein it will get deleted from the hard disk that is called as such a type of delete we call it as a drop whereas here the delete is we are deleting the contents from the file but the file is prevalent file persists but only the contents get deleted then the last operation is said to be a truncate operation in the case of truncate operation what do you mean by truncate truncating is appending the contents into a file so these are the set of operations that are available in a file we will see more about the file operations after the break welcome back after the break we were discussing about the file operations in this lecture so when we are seeing about the file operation i i disclosed many different file operations as create open close or create read write delete and then truncate so now we will see when we have created when we are going to read or write we are supposed to open the file so we will see how it accesses so here it is so when you are going to open a file it searches the directory structure on the disk for entry and this is for open as well we can close because if you want to read or write if you want to read the contents from a file or if you want to write the contents into the file then definitely you are supposed to open the file first of all then only you can read or write and then you are supposed to close the file so these are the two basic operations that are required and then apart from opening and closing the file for in in order to read or write or delete or truncate or whatever operation that you want to perform in the file apart from this we have the other set of operations as after you open we have the file pointer file pointer denotes where the file was kept at the last read or where it was last written at times when you let us consider an example you are typing certain contents in ms word supposing the power goes off immediately and you do not have a ups or your uh, uninterrupted power supply or an inverter to back up so what happens here your system even goes off uh, system even goes to a shutdown mode then after the power comes in when you open the ms word you could find a a pop up stating this is a these are the files that has been last saved by the user do you want to recover it or do you uh, or do you want to dismantle it so when you say recover so what does it mean there is a pointer internally even inside the operating system even if you are not saved it it says that you can store the contents and and it it keeps track of where the file has been last read or what are the contents that has been last written so that is said to be a file pointer the next set of operation is the file open count open count denotes how many number of times a file has been open then the next one is about the disk location of the file disk location is cache of data access information cache is nothing but a memory buffer how many times this data gets accessed and how many times it has been placed in the buffer and then about the access rights as i said few people you can give the different set of access you can make the you can ask the user either to read the contents of a file or you can give full access to the con, uh, user full access in the sense he can he will be given the priority permission to write the contents to type whatever he want to delete or to modify or to insert so these are the operations that you are deciding for a particular file you can make the file to become a read only file or to become a hidden file or to give full access file then 
let us now see the different file types and its name and its extensions as i have said we are we are speaking about a doc file for a doc file when you are saving it you will be saying it with dot doc the file name dot doc let us now see the other file types other file extensions so here it is so if it is of an executable file usually the extension will be of dot exe the file name some file name say for example xyz is your file name xyz dot exe or dot com or it can be stored as dot bin then if it is of an object file object file is being used with respect to some sort of java codings and all then it will be stored with dot obj and in newer versions it gets stored with dot o which is used for this these object files are used for the compilation purposes then if it is of a source code file source code is one wherein if you are going to save in terms of the languages if you are going to use languages as c or c++ or java or dot net or whatever it is what is the file type so if you are going to type in c you are going to give your file name and it should be accompanied with dot c extended with dot c if it is of c++ dot cc or dot cpp will be for c++ and then dot java for java file dot pass is for pascal file dot asm is for assembler files and dot a is for any sort of attribute files so this denotes different various languages and for batch files we use the file name dot batch dot bat this batch file is used for storing it in terms of working with the commands in terms of the uh, command line execution and then about the text file we have dot txt and dot doc and then for a word processor file again we have dot doc and dot tex is for the text file and then the rtf also we have rtf is rich text format so even this is one other uh, type for instead of using a doc file then if you are going to have a library file it gets stored in dot lib or dot dll dll is a library file which has been kept for the operating system for the proper functioning of the operating system we have this dll file and then this dot lib is a file wherein when you are going to use your languages the supporting library files we have it as the dot uh, lib files and then if you are going to print a file it can be as ps or pdf or jpg ps is a postscript file pdf is a portable document file format jpg is a joint photographers group and then if we are going to archive archive is if you are going to compress your file if you are going to zip your file if you are going to say for example you have somewhere around 10 word files and you want to zip it and you want to compress it and you want to send it as a email when you are going to compress it that file type will be mentioned as dot zip dot zip or dot rar if you are going to use a winzip to compress it winzip software to compress it the file type will be as zip if you are going to use a winrar software to compress it the file type will be as dot rar winrar and then we have a multimedia file as far as a multimedia file is concerned either multimedia is one where you use it for the video files so we store it in the file name dot mp4 or mp3 or mpeg4 so whatever the video files dot avi so for for uh, listening for audio and for viewing videos we store it in this format so these are the different file types available now let us see the next topic is about the access method so how to access these files so there are several access method out of which we will be seeing the first access method as a sequential access method in the sequential access method these are the things that are available one is read next other one is write next other one is reset other one is no read after last write what does it mean read next read next will read the next content that is available in the file right next is till this something will be written and from there whatever you want to write so the pointer this access method is nothing but a pointer to which which holds or which will be placed in a location where and from where you can start your next set of operation either either you can read or you can write 
to the ne from the you can start from the next location then no read no reset or no read after last write is nothing but it is rewriting it is modifying the contents from the file reset is you are trying to reset the entire file operations the next one is the direct access the first access we saw was about a sequential access the second access is said to be a direct access in the case of direct access and the third access is said to be an indirect access so now let us see an direct access in the case of direct access we are going to read or write so read n write n n denotes the relative block number then the position to n position to n as say for example we have the set of file and in the word document we have typed somewhere around 10 different pages so now i want to identify a particular word as file so i press a control f button or a, or a search button and then i type the word file and if i press an enter it positions me in such a way that if supposing if a file word is available in the fourth page in the third line then the cursor goes to that location and it highlights so that is said to be the positioning of a file then after positioning even if when you press and enter again if there are several other names of the same type of file then it goes to the read next or to the write next for replacing and for rewriting then n denotes a relative block number over here so this is how a sequential file access looks like so here it is so here this is how it gets stored so this is to be a beginning of file and this is to be a current position till here let us consider people have typed it and from here if i want to type it again i can read or write i can write the contents from here and this is how it stores internally then so let us see uh, the simulation of serial sequential access and a direct access file so sequential access is we have a reset read next and write next so let us have a counter by name cp which has been initialized to 0 and when we are going to read the contents from the file so we use the read operation and read cp when this has been read then this 0 will get incremented by 1 so which means that cp becomes 1 now so cp equal to cp plus 1 then when we are going to write the contents onto the cp then again the cp gets incremented by 1 so cp becomes again cp plus 1 so now let us see an example of an index file and we will see how this index file is related how we are going to relate to how we are going to um, check with respect to two or more number of files say for example over here in this we have a file we have certain only uh, in our file let us consider it as an access file ms access file wherein we have only few details about an employee we have the details such as employee number employee name and uh, employee date of birth and and this employee salary supposing if i want to know the employee address and the employee current location which is not been available in this file and if it has been stored in a different file so how do we link it out that is one part the other part is we may have all these details in different different locations so how to index and how to relate these contents to the file so that we retrieve the data from that location is that what we are going to see in this example in this example we have the name as last name as adam arthur asher etc etc smith and the details of smith if i want to know the full details of a smith the first name of a smith and uh, and if i want to know his uh, social security number if i want to know the age so this is said to be my second file wherein i have all these details so the first file is said to be my index file and the second file is said to be my relative file so how do i relate it i need to have a common field so let me have in the first file the employee number as a common field and even in the second file let me have the employee number so if i know if i say if i assume the employee number of smith is said to be 8 lakh 1 and in the second file 
even if i am going to have 8 lakh one so this will map to that 8 lakh one and we can retrieve the data of 8 lakh one all the all the details of 8 lakh one so this is how and the relative file now let us see about a disk structure now let us summarize whatever we have seen in today's lecture we have seen what is a file concept and then we have discussed about the file structure the file attributes and the different file operations and as well the various file types like dot doc dot c dot c plus plus dot cpp dot java so on and so forth and we have seen the various access methods used in file handling now let us see the possible questions that could arise from this session so the question number one is what is a file mention the file types list the file attributes what are the different file operations list various file types what is an access method so with this we come to an end of the session and we will see more topics on file handling in our forthcoming lectures thank you <laughs>